The Sea of Galilee. 2,000 years ago, this was the home of Jesus and his disciples, fishermen that many would argue changed the world. Today, the Sea of Galilee is a major attraction for Christian pilgrims from all walks of life and every part of the world who have come to see and experience the land of their Savior. It is also home for two brothers, Yuval and Moshe Lufin, and what some are calling the archaeological find of the century, a 2,000-year-old boat that has been nicknamed the Jesus Boat. The Sea of Galilee, Israel's largest freshwater lake, is the lowest freshwater lake in the world at 209 meters below sea level. Today, the Sea of Galilee, or as it's known by Israelis, the Lake Kinneret, is the main source of water for Israel. It is a tourist destination for locals and foreigners who have come to experience the Galilee's many historical and spiritual sites. The Sea of Galilee has a rich history from ancient times, yet is perhaps most famous because of one of its residents from 2,000 years ago. It is here that the New Testament of the Bible tells many stories of Jesus and his disciples. Yuval and Moshe, second generation fishermen, grew up in the Galilee and spent much of their free time searching the banks of the lake. אני בגיל מאוד צעיר הפכתי להיות ארכיאולוג חובב. הרבה יותר עניין אותי איך אנשים חיו לפני אלפי שנים, ובתוך הבקעה מצאתי המון דברים שקשורים לזה. 1986. The water level in the Sea of Galilee was unusually low. Yuval and Moshe, who claimed to be amateur archaeologists, took the opportunity to do some exploring, hoping to find something. יום אחד שהלכנו בקוף, בחוף בין מגדל לגנוסר, חוף ממש שלא היה עליו שום דבר, מוישלה מצא מטבעות עתיקות. על פני השטח מטבעות עתיקות יהודיות ורומיות, ואמרנו, אם יש פה מטבעות, אז בטח יש כאן עוד דבר. באחד הימים הלכנו ביחד ואנחנו רואים על, ה... על החול, רואים מסמר. אנחנו מסתכלים טוב, זה מסמר רומי, אנחנו מכירים אחרי כמה סנטימטר אחד, עוד עשרים סנטימטר, עוד אחד, עוד אחד, הבנו שאנחנו רואים משהו. והכיוון הזה של המסמרים, שהם היו בקבוצות, בעצם גילה לנו שיש שם סירה. איך ידענו שזה משהו, לא יכולנו לד... לדעת, אבל תיארנו לעצמנו, שיכול להיות שיש רק קרש אחד, שאין את כל הסירה, עד שלא הייתה שם חפירה. בכלל אף אחד לא, לא תיאר לעצמו שיש סירה שלמה. The brothers, not yet sure of what they have found, place a call to the office of marine archaeologists Kurt Rave and Shelley Waxman, who are busy themselves excavating shipwrecks off the Mediterranean coast. We came in the office and there was this message from the guys here. Uh, we found something, please come to and check it. So. The next day we would come here, and all the way, already going down here from the hill, uh, we were joking, because on the way you have this note that you go beyond sea level, okay? So we start already joking, well, if it's a shipwreck, we're going to have a funny excavation, because it's going to be the lowest shipwreck. <laughs> uh, yeah, 240 meters underwater level. Uh, Mediterranean water level and still in dry land excavation so it's going to be something very unusual how unusually we didn't know by then but it was already uh, we were feeling already that something is going to happen having searched the Sea of Galilee before Kurt was skeptical the brothers had really found anything of importance 
we met those guys here and uh, they took us to the site. Before that we had coffee and we drew exactly what we have to look for next time that they just don't call us just like that, you know, just check if it's really ancient. Otherwise it's a pity we come all the way from the Mediterranean. And when we came to the site, we were flabbergasted, you know, it's a, it, I don't, just what we were drawn in the cafeteria was there, laying for us. And okay, that blew our minds. From that moment, we knew our life will never be the same. The brothers had discovered an ancient boat. Could these remains be from the time of Jesus? Extremely low water in the Sea of Galilee gave two brothers an opportunity to explore what is usually hidden by water and mud. Finding some pieces of wood and what appeared to be ancient nails, Yuval and Moshe called marine archaeologist Kurt Rave for help. We met the two brothers here, like the disciples, you know, the two Jewish fishermen, the, the locals, and uh, they took us to the site. Today of the Gilui, Kurt and Shelly came and came with a jeep full of food and food. We said to them, what are you going to do? It's on the land, the sea is on the land. הם אמרו, בסדר, הגענו לשם, הם אמרו, אנחנו ננקה אם נראה כל עשרה סנטימטר דיבל של עץ, סימן שהיא עתיקה. ניקו את זה, והם התחילו לקפוץ, מצאתם סירה עתיקה, על ה... אתם על המפה, באותו רגע התחיל גשם שוטף, רצנו לג'יפ, לא הגענו עוד לג'יפ, הגשם הפסיק, יצאה שמש ויצאה קשת, שהייתה קשת כפולה. שאפשר היה לגעת בה, כל כך היא הייתה קרובה אלינו. ואז אמרנו, הסירה הזאת היא מיוח... הסירה הזאת שייכת למישהו, אמרנו. We suddenly got this double rainbow bow coming on, on the side, and we just blew our mind, because the rain starts pouring after all those years of drought, and it was like a blessing, you know, from heaven. They said, you guys, go ahead, you got it. And from that moment became a madhouse. Word quickly spread about this amazing find. People from all over began swarming the site. Rumors the boat was filled with gold prompted both the police and the military to guard the wreck. And camera crews from around the globe began to document every aspect of the dig. It's certainly the only excavation that I've ever done, which was recorded by dozens of television stations all around the world. I think it's the best recorded excavation ever. We couldn't move anywhere or do anything. There were television cameras. Really. It was a tourist site from day one. People were crowding around it. Uh, we needed police and uh, military to keep the people away from the site. Uh, it was the only excavation with an ice cream fender and hot dog stands and everything around it. I mean, never have seen like it. I'm 30 years in this business, I've never seen something like it. With the entire world watching their every move, they began their dig without any preparations. People from all over began helping doing whatever needed to be done. Realizing how fragile this boat was, they called conservationist Orna Cohen, who at first was very skeptical. Of course, I told them no way to find a boat at the lake. It's of the Sea of Galilee because it's a freshwater lake, lot of bacterial activity. Nothing survived there more than a few years. They insisted for some reason, so I came, and surprisingly, it was a boat. Once we started to excavate the boat, immediately we saw it's in a big danger. It was very warm, it's, the wood starts to dry, and once it dried, uh, deformed and fall to pieces, it crumbled to pieces. Of course, uh, also the strength of the wood, it's not like fresh wood, it was like sponge. It didn't hold its own weight, so we had to put supports for the wood. So the challenge first to excavate, to clear it, to record it, and then to move it to a new place where the conservation will take place or something like that. Uh, this was an amazing challenge because all the experts for delicate uh, shipment and stuff like that that we called an engineer for delicate uh, things all said, in the timetable you are giving us, it's impossible. Racing against the rising waters of the lake, 
The team of volunteers and locals worked quickly to build dikes around the site. It wasn't long before artifacts were recovered that could possibly help identify and date the wreck. We found a cooking pot and an oil lamp from the Roman times. We got something that exists already for many years, but finally here is the proof. Right? What I mean with exist, for thousands of years there were depictions of it on mosaics, on glass and windows, uh, on um, Painters Michelangelo, Dali, Rembrandt, everyone painted the Galilee boat already and it's living in the subconscious of all the Christians around the world. Uh, but there's never one found. Uh, found every lake, every sea around the world, they found shipwrecks. Just not here, okay? The holiest sea. And so here we got finally a boat from that time, exactly on that place where it all happened. What the brothers had found in the mud of the Sea of Galilee was a fishing boat, just like the boats described in the Bible. Could Jesus have used this boat? Working around the clock in the Sea of Galilee, the team suspected the boat they were unearthing may be an ancient fishing boat. As more of the boat was uncovered and found intact, they realized it resembled an ancient mosaic that had been discovered at the ruins of the biblical town of Migdal which was just a few kilometers away. 2,000 years ago, fishing was a thriving industry in the Galilee region. Much of what we know today of ancient fishing comes from the New Testament Gospels. During the time of Jesus, many wooden boats would have daily taken to the sea. Powered by sails and oars, these small crafts could hold 13 to 15 people. The Sea of Galilee and fishing are key elements in the accounts of the life of Jesus. Some of his disciples were fishermen, and many of his miracles were performed around the Sea of Galilee. The unearthed team decided to go to Migdal where this ancient mosaic was recovered and learn more about Migdal's role in the fishing community 2,000 years ago. Al tempo di Gesù Magdala era una delle più importanti città della costa occidentale del lago. Il nome semitico Migdal Nunaya, registrato dalle fonti ebraiche, in particolare nella Mishnah, nel Talmud, nei vari Targum, in particolare nel Targum di Gerusalemme, eh, rimanda ugualmente all'attività economica principale della città che era la pesca. Migdal Nunaia infatti significa la torre dei pesci. Da Giuseppe Flavio sappiamo che mh, la città di Magdala, che a suo dire contava 40.000 abitanti, era dotata di un porto, di un grande porto, probabilmente questa torre dei pesci doveva essere il faro, posizionato strategicamente all'ingresso del porto, al cui interno si muovevano eh, diverse centinaia di pescherecci, barche da pesca, perciò la pesca doveva rappresentare senz'altro l'industria principale. As the world watched, the shape of the boat was slowly being revealed. But this excavation had started so quickly the team was unprepared and were forced to improvise in order to move the boat before the sea reclaimed it. All we had was a jeep, a few buckets and a few shuffles and go and excavate an ancient boat which is uh, actually 90, more than 99% itself waterlogged so can't hardly hold its own weight. So it, everything was mission impossible and that's why it always, uh, we excavated many shipwrecks, even older ones, inter more interesting ones, but nothing was so special as this one. It was mission impossible from the first day. When we needed needles to put the number tags on it, because we were sure at one point would disin disintegrate and we won't uh, know anymore what's connected with what, we put on tags, but we can't do it with, you need to uh, rest, uh, rest uh, free nails for that. So. Suddenly somebody got an idea to use cactus needles that were growing a few meters from us, you know. So we were just clipping all day with uh, scissors, cactus needles, and that way we overcame that problem. 
to take the boat out was another problem because uh, the water level rose in the time. So like good Dutch, we built dikes around it. Uh, but in the end, we couldn't get it ashore anymore. So we're surrounded with an island. Preserving the wood and moving the boat appeared to be virtually impossible until Orna Cohen came up with an ingenious plan. For this, we decided to use something very unusual. It's called polyurethane foam. You blow it to the place, it uh, immediately got uh, strong, stiff enough to hold the, and support the wood, and then you can go on excavating around it and to move. So once we came with this solution, things went very quickly. Encasing the entire vessel with a spray-on foam polyurethane, the team was then able to protect the wood and remove the boat from its muddy grave. Uh, at this stage, another question raised how we are going to move it from the site to the museum. Uh, we had uh, been offered an helicopter from the army. We thought about a track going along the shore, things like that. But the most obvious thing was to just sail it on the lake. The polyurethane shell not only protected the wood, it also acted as a float. And after 2,000 years at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee, the boat sailed again. After successfully excavating the 2,000-year-old fishing boat from its grave, the team discovered the polyurethane shell they had encased the wreck in would allow it to float. For the first time in 2,000 years, the boat sailed again and even carried a passenger. Uh, once we finished to pack the boat and to, when we start to sail it, to move it to the conservation uh, area, uh, someone had to sit on top of, the, of it to stable it, to see that uh, all this package won't turn off. Uh, so I sat on it to stable it and then it was uh, moving slowly on the lake. It was very exciting, of course, <laughs> thinking that I'm probably the only person who sails this boat after 2,000 years and probably the last one too. <laughs> Today, the boat is on display in the Yigalalon Center on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Visitors from all over the world and from all walks of life come to visit the boat and imagine for a moment what life was like during the time of Jesus. It was in the time of the Galilee War that we were fighting in Lebanon, also me and the brothers. Just in that period when the whole world only heard about Israel, about bad things, war and destruction and things like that, suddenly we had something positive, something good, something not connected to the Palestinian problem or army or destruction or politics or that, okay? just something good for everyone. And either if you're a Christian or not, I mean everybody was excited about the discovery, about the recovery, about the preservation, everything in itself was a miracle. And uh, so finally there was some good news out of this region, okay? I think that's one of the, uh, if we manage to do that, it's good enough. For the brothers Moshe and Yuval, who discovered the boat more than 20 years ago, this is the fulfillment of a dream. כמובן, מאותו רגע שמצאנו את הסירה, ברור שזה שינה לנו את החיים, את ה... אבל ידענו את החשיבות שלה, ושהיא חשובה לכל העולם. כן, הרגשה טובה מאוד שזה קרה לאח שלי ולי, זה... אחרי שמצאתי אותה, הבנתי שיש דבר כזה גם עם ה... עכשיו, הסירה הזאת היא בעצם, יש בה איזה מין רוח מסוימת שהיא משנה את כל הדברים לטובה. אנחנו, המוישה לבני, קוראים לה סירת השלום. בגלל שה... שהתחלנו לחפור, אז המגדלאים, השכנים שלנו, אמרו שזו סירה שלהם וכמעט ירו בנו. ברגע שהתחלנו לחפור, הם הצטרפו אלינו ועזרו לנו לחפור. ואז הבנו שהסירה הזאת זה לא סירת מריבה, זה סירת אהבה, סירת לשלום. To the brothers, it is the boat of peace, 
but many people around the world call it the Jesus boat. What does this boat do for Christian faith? Well, for biblical archaeology, is, of course, is one of the major finds. I mean, uh, you have, uh, we have a lot of archaeology here. We have a very few relics that exactly can be identified from a certain time, or the, that time, from that place. So here, this, this became really a relic. It's you know? like the Wailing Wall, or, but we have few, most of the places here, or churches, that actually built much later on a site that someone decided this must be it, but no archaeological evidence. And here, here we got a factual fact. This is about from the time, from that place, from those events, and uh, if Jesus used it or not. At that period, there were about 600 of those fishing boats around here. So we have a 1 in 600 <laughs> percent chance, but uh, it's not important, you know. This is how they look like. It's from the time, and this is the only one we got. So. That's the closest we can get. That's enough for science. The nickname Jesus boat, we never come with, but it's from the times of Jesus. The boat from the time of Jesus gives us a glimpse back into one of the most interesting times in history and helps us imagine what his life was like and reminds us of his message of peace. The discovery of this boat has forever changed this region and the lives of those who helped deliver her from her watery tomb. The Jesus Boat is another fascinating remnant of Jewish history that has been unearthed in Israel's ancient soil.